We are back. Episode 49 of the BSG Podcast. We're one away from the Big 5-0 where we are going to be at Moon Golf Live. You can come hang out with us. Phones by phone. You come hang out with us. You can uh, hit a shot, win $100 to spend right then and there in the store. We're going to pay for it. It's going to be a good time. I'm excited for it. I've already got a um, pretty good amount of people, I think, very interested. Ooh, I know my dad. Me. I know Jody's going to be there. Oh, big Jody. Yeah, he said he's uh, ready to take home that $100. Have we picked out a – have we nailed down – the hole changes every week. It goes from Payne's Valley to hole 12 <laughs> at Augusta. Every time, this dog. He said change it. <laughs> I know, this dog – in the minute, there's an interview about to happen, and the dog poops in the interview. I can't stand him. Uh, so, <laughs> I guess, I mean, you can make the decision. What do you think? Payne's Valley or Augusta? It is going to be the week of the Masters, but that's a tough I, hole. That is a tough hole. I like 16 yeah. if we at Augusta. Oh. Because. I'm down. But that does make it maybe a little easier because there's a back pin location where it almost funnels oh, the yeah. ball to it. Hold the ones that are meant to happen. Yeah, and I don't know the yardage right off the top of the my head. The only question, the only <laughs> question is, does she have Augusta on the simulator? See, that's another good question. Okay, so ba- that's going to be the move, backup plan, Payne's Valley. Yes, I'll agree with that. And if they don't have any of that, hopefully they have some clubs in there, y'all can just pick the yardage you need. But it's for 100 bucks, so make sure you come check it out live uh, at Moon Golf in Auburn, Alabama. We're going to be there and hopefully giving out some pretty nice prizes just for the people that come and show up and support us. That'd and, be nice. And, yeah, and Moon Golf. We're, we're looking forward to doing that, so be sure to be there. And I just want – before we go any further, we didn't have our guy at the beginning, and I just want to say this is his first absence since – Second, second. I mean, yeah, second oh. second absence since – well, it'd be his first since oh, yeah. the – time he didn't come on the first episode episode one so he made it 48 episodes wow without missing a day zach if you're listening text us uh guatemala let us know you're listening you think he's watching i th- i think he listens to him mitchell if you're listening text us the word uh coconut and let us know but that's yeah first one in a while <laughs> but as always like we said we kind of jumped right into it this episode is brought to you by Moon Golf, which tonight is a very special night. We have Sarah, who's a club fitter at Moon Golf in the Melbourne store. Yes. Uh, she's going to be on with us, and we're going to talk more about that in a minute. But Moon Golf is the where you need to go to get all your stuff. Yeah, can't say it enough, honestly. And we are proudly presented by them. Everything that we do, the podcast, I'm sure we're throwing them in the titles on the uh, the new videos coming out. We've got the new travel series coming out, and we're going to start throwing ads in there. So yep. even everybody – that doesn't listen to the podcast, knows about Moon Golf. Got to know about Moon Golf. So the plan tonight is we're about to run through uh, our picks for the tournament coming up. Uh, we're not going to spend much time, I guess, talking about the Dell. All you need to know is Rory did not win. I'm excited <laughs> about that. Uh, we're going to make our picks, then we're going to get to the interview. So let's jump into, is it Valero? Valero. The, That's the how Valero I say it. Valero Open is happening this week. There's some good people in the field. My favorite in the field is, of course, Zach Blair. Old ZB is in the field again. And if you're a uh, TBC member, you oh better be. Gosh. You better get ready for the drop Saturday. It's a good one. It's Masters edition, and I've got some stuff bookmarked. And I can get in there early. Casey can get in there early. If you're not a member, go be a member. Go be a member. I've joined. Uh, I'm gonna beg my wife to let me spend some money this weekend because <laughs> the the putter head covers. I'm I'm starting to collect Butt Club putter head covers, and uh, they have a Masters themed one. I've got to get it. I think that one's going to go fast. I know. I need to be on it. I've, I feel like at 5 p.m., you got to be ready to check out like that. I, I agree. But, yeah, this week at the Valero, it's going to be at TPC San Antonio, which is where I believe it usually is. Yep. Um, the defending champion is J.J. Spawn. He got into the Masters by winning this tournament last year. And the same way that he got in, this guy needs to get in, and he is my oh. pick to win it. Ricky Fowler. So wait, so Ricky doesn't have a Masters invite right now. He does not. But if he wins, this is last chance. This is last chance to get there. Mm. And I think I think it's gonna motivate him because I don't know how many Masters he's not been at. But I, I don't I think, think he was in it last year, was he? This is I, I don't whole, know. Yeah, I don't think he he may not have been. I think this was a whole issue last year that he did not get invited last year. S- somehow or another, there was a few events last year, like some other majors that he got sponsorship. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, invites or whatever. So. You know, this is a big one for him, and I, I want to see him there. I think a lot of other people want to see him there. I want to see him there. He's not going to get there. Would love to see him there because he's not going <laughs> to win. Uh, Zach picked um, – uh, Tyrrell Hatton. T- 
Terrell Hatton. I don't think he even knows who Terrell Hatton is. I think he just swiped as fast as he could and stopped. I'm going with uh, the man is a menace on the tour. He can win whatever he wants to, I think, Hideki Matsuyama. I agree. He, Hideki is uh, – he's when he's on his A game – he, He's a green jacket wearer. Yeah. He's, um, he's one of those guys that, like, when you watch him play, you're like, how does he do this? Because – It's his, so good. He, it's almost like <laughs> – in my, in my opinion of Hideki, it's almost like he's so uncontrolled – that it looks controlled. That is true. He's very boring to watch. But, like, the year he won the Masters, I was like, this is so boring. Yeah. Um, but I think the Masters coming up, he's trying to get tuned because I think he wants to win it again for yep. Japan. And uh, so I think he's going to be good this week. I like him. Now, if for any reason, if he withdraws, I've got Zach Blair winning the Valero <laughs> Texas <laughs> Open. Just so that's out there and people know. Because I don't want anybody to see Zach Blair win. And you will know, be like, who in the world? Your boy's calling it if Hideki withdraws. Zach Blair is the... The 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 uh, the sneaky, was it the the guy going to come up? You'll never know him or Duffner, but Duffner's not going to win it. He just got to make that mortgage payment every month, <laughs> so he's trying to make some money. But I got Hideki. We'll um, we'll let Mitch comment. Oh, this. he did. He's he texted us. Oh, oh, okay. He's I think he went with you without you even knowing. That's who he said. Oh man. Let me check. He said, "Give me Ricky." Oh. I don't know. If he probably didn't know I picked it, but yeah, I don't think he knew. But that's so two picks for Ricky. Two picks for Ricky. Um, now, if I was y'all, if I was, if y'all were to be putting money on this for any reason, I would not follow Brady and <laughs> Mitchell's. I'm doing it just because of the love for Ricky, and we need to see him. We need to see him at the Masters. Nobody was right about last week's. Oh gosh, last week was bad. Um, we can jump into that. The fantasy picks presented by Primo Golf Apparel. What an ad read. Last I, week. Dude, last week that was awesome. We got some uh, we got some interaction with the Primo I guys. I know Primo loving on it. Let me. I gotta pull mine up because I think I went to go make my picks last week. It wouldn't even let me. Oh yeah, you were you did not put a pick I in last not. week. Zach is uh, dominating. He's two for two in this uh, this segment so far, and he's leading. He's actually passed AJ, which I did not see coming. He's passed AJ in our fantasy league. He's now in second place and. I'm only maybe 150 points ahead of him. so I want to know why you, Zach, and AJ all picked Wyndham Clark. What an odd person to pick. But what's the odds of all three of y'all picking such and a And he no did name? good, too. He finished he? Um, he finished in the top ten. Is AJ copying picks? Cause I think so. Wyndham Clark, it was all y'all. And then Joel Damon was uh, Zach. Zach. And then Thomas yeah. Detry was that. He literally swapped one person. <laughs> I had one guy uh, that was like three over. It was the guy I picked, um, Taylor Pendrick. Oh, yeah. And uh, so he – he was like three over, and I was gonna swap him, and it was too late in the round, and I couldn't swap him to my bench oh, player. No. And I had a bench player, I can't remember who it was, but he was like eleven or twelve under par, and he would have gotten me like thirty or forty more points if I would have swapped him. So you're winning the whole league right now. Yeah, I, I'm gonna have to really, really hit, nail it down this next couple of weeks to get a good lead. But I'm in fifth. I need. To, um, I at least need to get up into the podium, but it, it's not looking like it's gonna happen. But my picks this week. Do you already have yours? I've made mine, but I need to log in, so go ahead with yours. Let me get to it real quick. Roster. Okay. Of course, we got Hideki. I did put Ricky on there. Harry Higgs. Charlie Hoffman. And then on my bench, I got Keith Mitchell, Mr. Mizuno. They say the best-dressed man in golf. That's what somebody recently said. I saw it on <laughs> And then Francesco Malinari. Really? Should be an F1 driver, I feel like. He's, yeah. got, the, he's got the build for it. I started watching uh, – that on Netflix. We'll get in that in a minute. I know you're an F1 guy. Yeah, I do. I do like watching it. I haven't finished this last series yet, or the last season. On oh, no, Netflix? Yeah, but I kept up with it a little bit, and I, I mean, it was kind of a boring oh, season. Oh, never mind. I'm not watching it now. But this, uh, this, I think this year, the way it started off, it's going to be a lot better. But I'll, I'll give you the rundown on mine. Let's see it. Corey Connors, the Canadian. Uh, Thomas Dietrich again. He's he. I think he's been playing very well. Uh, Ricky Fowler, of course, the guy to win it, and I've also got Terrell Hatton in my on mine. Oh my goodness! So uh, I don't know if Zach saw that. But got, he's got to. There's no other reason he'd pick him. <laughs> the, on my bench, I've got Ryan Fox. That guy, I don't know if you've heard of him, but dude, he is like every event he's in, he's in the top twenty, like no matter what. Jeez. He's he's like always in the hunt, but I don't think he's won yet on the PGA Tour. 
Um, and then Ben Griffin bringing up the rear, just in case I need to swap somebody out. Just to put him in. Yeah. So those are our picks presented by Primo Golf Apparel. Use BSG15 for 15% off. Make sure you check out the tournament this week so y'all can see Hideki win it all. That's who I've got winning it. Um, think, is that it? Well, you can check out. We're about to jump into the interview with Sarah. She's a club fitter in, uh, at Moon Golf in Melbourne, Florida. She's going to tell us how she got plugged in there. And uh, go follow her on TikTok. She posts great content on there. Hope you enjoy this interview. All right, guys. Today, our special guest on the show is a club fitter from our favorite. Favorite store. Favorite store, Moon Golf. Uh, she is at the Melbourne location, and her name is Sarah. So welcome to the show, Sarah. Thank you, guys. That was a great introduction. <laughs> Thank you. Love your hat. I've got my Moon Golf shirt on. I didn't have time uh, to change. I, <laughs> I got my I've got, we've got plenty of gear, though. Don't worry. So I think the first question should be, this, you may have this, how did you get plugged in with Moon Golf? So um, you know Ann. So. Yep. Um, so Ann found me through, um, an organization called for hire, which was started by her former, uh, teammate in college. And so it's basically connects former college golfers and females specifically with golf employers that, you know, want to work in the golf industry. So it was, uh, actually about a year ago, um, I was connected with Courtney Trimble from for hire and from there Ann got introduced to me. She reached out and I went for an interview and was kind of kind of got set off from there. And I moved two months or so after after my initial interview. I had to to get a couple things going before I could move since I lived in Sarasota across the state. But yeah, huh. so I've been at Moon for it's coming up on a year actually next week. Is that the same event that uh, Ann's been posting a lot recently about the if you want to get plugged into the golf industry as a woman, it's coming up again, right? I think soon. Yeah. So Courtney does like these virtual job fairs. I didn't meet Ann through that, uh -huh. um, but I just met her through <clears throat> Courtney, basically giving her my information. And um, I didn't even know really too much about moon golf because we don't have it on the, on the West coast side of Florida. But as soon as I met her and as soon as I went to the interview and went to the store, I was like, okay, I need to figure out a way to, to make this move happen. Yeah. Um, were you a little backtrack before that your background in golf were you playing a lot before you got into um, into working at moon so I played in college and then I played my freshman year and I transferred schools and after I transferred schools I stopped playing competitively and I started working at a PGA Tour Superstore by my campus so I started working in golf through retail and just worked as a cashier, worked in the club repair area, and then eventually found my way to fitting. So I worked there for almost four years, um, and that's where I was working before I, I made the switch to Moon. Um, big. What's your thoughts on PGA Superstore? I have thoughts. I actually <laughs> – so – I was actually just there. That's where I just Ugh. came from. Um, <laughs> That's my thoughts. <laughs> just because they have some brands that we don't carry. Okay. Moon. okay. So, um, so we picked up a couple things, but I enjoyed my time working there. I think it serves its purpose, but it's a different purpose than what Moon Golf is. Yeah. Right. And I think everybody's experience with a big box retailer is a little bit different. So. You know, I, I think, you know, sometimes I walk into a PGA store or a golf galaxy and I'm like, this is not the way I would want to, I see it from like the outsider perspective now of, okay, this is why, you know, big box retailers kind of get the, the rap that they do. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. So. I think, I think we've had a lot of discussion about that and yeah, like you said, there's a place for it and there's a place for what moon golf is. And I, I think the personable experience that you get from, going into a store like that and going back the next time and you you're seeing like the same faces and the same people so I think that has a lot to do with why those kind of stores are helpful for people that really really are I guess in tune with golf and are very um what would you say like re I don't know what are what are we like I'm never seven foot in a superstore again well we kind of <laughs> had to that day we went in there but yeah, yeah. No, I mean, ever since I've been, now that I've been to Moon Golf, out like, so before Moon Golf in Auburn, all we had was Dick's Sporting Goods. That was your, mm. really, right? That was it. Academy was it. has nothing. Yeah. So. Um, Dick's Sporting, Sporting Goods was it. 
and it was miserable. So now that I'm having moon golf, there's nowhere else for me to go around here because our closest superstore is in Atlanta, which is over an hour away, anyways. Um, but my my feelings towards them are not the greatest, so we, we'll say that for another episode. <laughs> um, but well, yeah, we love it. We'll get into the some questions about your fitting skills. Uh, when someone comes in looking for fitting, whether it be a driver, iron set, or anything like that, uh, what's some of the first few things you're looking at, like? when they start swinging and get warmed up, like their, their numbers that they're showing you, what's, what's some of the first things that stand out to you? Yeah. So, I mean, it kind of depends on, you know, their skill level, what they're looking to accomplish. And then if we're doing driver and irons, you're kind of looking at numbers a little bit differently, but I would say like for a driver, for for instance, for let's say your, your mid handicapper, you know, the two main things from a numbers perspective that I'm looking at is, your launch and spin, and then obviously the direction that it's going, the kind of curvature that we're seeing from the golf ball. Um, and then from the actual swing itself, I'm looking at your tempo. I'm looking at, you know, what your club path is, why we're maybe seeing the the ball flight patterns that we are. And that's kind of, you know, already starting to kind of go through what I know of different heads and different shafts and starting to kind of put together in my head what I think some possible options are. But yeah, from just a ball plate, all flight perspective, launch and spin, but you know, obviously we're trying to hit the ball, you know, straighter. We just we don't want to just hit it longer. Yeah. But those two main things, if you can get them in a pretty good spot, a lot of the other stuff will get taken care of. So if I came in there with a an older club head, um, I guess would you say shaft is more important than the club head? That like for a driver maybe, driver shafts. I think it goes hand in hand. Uh huh. Um I would say majority of players will come in with like their existing club. A lot of times, especially if it's something that you bought off the rack, Yeah. there's probably more of an issue with the shaft than there is the head itself. Right. Cause with driver heads, if we want to break down like categories, there's maybe like three categories of clubs. There's your ultra draw bias clubs to help with people that slice it. Mm-hmm. There's your kind of overall forgiving clubs for those that are kind of, you know, the 80% of golfers will say, or what the manufacturer thinks 80% of the golfers are going to buy. Yeah. And then you have your lower spin, less forgiving head. That's normally going to be designed for faster swing speeds and better ball strikers and things like that. But shafts, you can get so in depth with weight, the type of shaft. So I would say, I don't like to put one over the other because both have to be right but more people come in with the wrong shaft than they do the wrong head. I had yeah. that I had that happen uh, the beginning of this year. I was comfortable with the feel of my driver head and I just knew after kind of going and hitting in some bays and seeing some numbers I was like there's got to be a, an improvement somewhere with the shaft. So that's what that's whenever I went to Moon and got fitted for a shaft and I think I hit like seven seven different shafts that day and I mean mm-hmm. honestly that was some, one of the best like experiences I could have had because I was able to see like what certain shafts just the weights and the way that they're like shaped and all that stuff can really uh, affect the way your ball flight your spin and all those numbers it, it was honestly an educationally the the right thing to do this dog's attacking us right now. <laughs> he's, he's, got, he's tangled up in the cord. Hang on. This is my wife's dog. I can't stand him. Um, <laughs> oh and somehow God. she makes me bring him everywhere with me. I, I really can't stand him. Do you want a dog? I'll he's ship adorable. him. I'll ship him, too, honestly. He, um, just, he just took a... Yeah. And it's, it's he over used there. the bathroom over here. <laughs> That's why I'm about to get rid of him, because he just used the bathroom over here. I can't stand him. Um, so as far as... let me, I want to ask this. I'm always curious as far as... They always tell you if you get into golf, uh, get fitted. If someone is uh, just getting into golf, is it worth them getting fitted before they even know really how to play? Um, and then part two of that is someone like us who's uh, double – well, he's like a 10, I'm like a 15 handicap compared to a scratch. Do you think it would make more of a difference for a scratch golfer getting fitted compared to us, or um, is it beneficial for all? It's beneficial for all, but there's different levels to a club fitting. Uh So like if somebody is brand new, you know, if I give them five different clubs, even if they're five totally different ones, they're probably not going to notice or feel. And we might not on the launch monitor see what exactly the differences are and why one club might be better than the other. Mm -hmm. But 
length is going to be a big thing to get right because if you're you know above average or shorter than average height or have really long arms or really short arms that's going to affect how you can set up to the golf ball and, and make it harder for yourself if you don't have that correct so i think there's like certain you know that's kind of like level one of club fitting is let's get length right let's get you in a club head that's pretty forgiving that's a club that you feel comfortable swinging you know not something too heavy or too light for you know the power that at that point you can produce or that we think you can produce down the line but when we get to like your mid handicappers like yourselves that are you know 10 15 you know i would say that category normally is going to notice the most improvement from a fitting because you've played enough that you've developed a feel for what you do and don't like and can't and can't hit well mm -hmm. as far as like different club heads different shafts and so that's where i've normally seen the biggest difference as far as performance goes and because a lot of times those those players might be playing a set that is their original set that they first bought or something that they've just put together over the years or might be hand me down so the difference in the improvement we can make is huge and then scratch players you'll see a difference in fitting more so for their peace of mind. Like they want to get a club that they feel they can hit every shot in the bag that they want to hit. Mm -hmm. And so you get a little bit more nitpicky with numbers and you might have three different shafts that average the same and are doing the same thing, you know, on the outside. But for them, there might be one that they feel like, okay, I can hit this shot the way I want to. It's coming out in a certain window that I want it to. So it gets much more fine tuned. That's cool. Can you explain? Because this was something that I didn't. I'd heard a couple of times about, um, and I don't think we've really had been explained from top to bottom what it was. But um, a pured shaft. Um, I, I I sent mine. I think it was to y'all store in Melbourne. I think that was where mm -hmm. y'all have that. Um, piece of equipment that does that. So can you explain mm -hmm. to everyone exactly what that is and what it does? Yeah, so the peering machine, we have one in our Melbourne store, we have one in our Palm Beach store. So essentially before we custom build our clubs, if you're going with a custom build or even if you order something, we can take it apart, but we'll take just the shaft itself, no grip, no head. We'll put it in this machine and it will basically analyze how the shaft is loading and releasing. And so when it starts, if you have a shaft that's maybe not the best of quality or just depending on the brand or depending on the weight of the shaft, normally lighter and more flexible shafts are going to be able to kind of load and release differently just because of how light they are. There's less materials. So the ring will start out when you first kind of load and release the club. It'll start out in a big circle. And so the shaft will kind of rotate and then it'll test it again. And that circle will get smaller and smaller and smaller until it's basically just bending and releasing and loading on a straight line. So it's, if people are familiar with spining a shaft, it's doing that simultaneously with a bunch of other tests to basically find the most consistent point of the shaft. Once we mark that most consistent point of the shaft so that every single time we take that club back, it feels the exact same and it's not oscillating in a different direction and the head's not oscillating in a different direction. Um, then that's how it's going to get shafted actually in the club and installed and glued that way. Well, I'd never heard of that before. You didn't know that? No, that? I did not know that. That's I why I sent mine w uh, with Ann that day because she was heading down to uh -oh. that store and I left it with her. How, how important is for you to do that with your shaft? Does every shaft do that? So, ev yeah, every shaft is going to, you know, just because of manufacturing flaws, right? Uh -huh. Just not every shaft is going to be perfectly round. Not every shaft is going to have the same level of quality to it. Um, and even, you know, the best, you know, your Fujikor Aventuses and things like that, even your best quality shafts in the world, they're still normally all going to have some sort of kind of spine to them. And so if you don't have that aligned, the potential for us to hit offline shots is a little bit greater. Now, how much that changes is depending on where that starting point is because most shafts are going to get put into a club either logo up or logo down that could be really close to its most consistent spot or it could be completely opposite um so you know you don't really know how much it can affect it until you actually cure it wow that's very interesting so yeah so i have all of my my shafts and my clubs are peered and 
I've noticed that my tightness of dispersion, especially with driver, has gotten a lot smaller. Wow, did not know that. <laughs> it just blew my mind. <laughs> yeah. And even depending on the shaft, it'll feel different too when you actually take it back because it'll normally feel a little bit stiffer mm-hmm. just because of that spine kind of being forward in that shaft. So it's not necessarily moving as much in your swing. Have you been up to the Auburn store? I have not. No, I actually haven't visited any of the other stores outside of Melbourne. Oh, okay. I need to, but have not. <laughs> well, make I haven't sure. made that trip yet. Yeah, yeah. make sure you're, you let us know, and we'll definitely come down yeah. there. I want to come film a fitting. Yeah. <laughs> you need a computer. <laughs> I, I do. I need some help. <laughs> um, going along with your fitting at Moon Golf, you also do a lot of uh, social media, TikTok and Instagram. Um, how has interacting with your social media helped uh, grow your community? So I started posting on TikTok two years ago now, um, and it was kind of a little bit out of boredom because it was still during kind of COVID times, and I was just getting back into working at PGA's Tour Superstore. Golf was blowing up, so I kind of took the opportunity and said, okay, I have a good amount of knowledge. I can share it, and people really kind of latched onto it and and enjoyed what I had to say. Um, I would say from just a community perspective, I've had several people that have either flown down or driven up or driven from different parts of the state um, to come get fit by me, which is always just a surreal experience because I'm it's I had one person I think within my first three weeks he flew from Atlanta and this was before the Auburn store Uh um he was going on a cruise so he flew down from Atlanta figured out oh moon golf is right here I'm gonna come get fit and he knew me from TikTok that's cool and so it's been really cool to see that and then we've been able to kind of partner up with a couple creators as well and um you know like yourselves and kind of create this kind of moon golf like social media community yeah. a little bit, which has been really cool too. Who, oh, go ahead. I was just going to ask, who's the, if there is one, uh, is there anybody like really cool that stands out that you fitted? Hmm. Or maybe like a cool story from it or anything? I saw where Gus was down at one of the stores recently. Uh, he was, yeah. So Gus was on. He was, uh, I fit him for clubs. So that, that was a really cool And that didn't experience. come off the top of your head when I just said who was the coolest person? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, there must be I, a lot then. <laughs> honestly, I, you know, I would say probably the coolest experience is that I got to fit one of the, uh, one of the college players that came down for the tournament. Uh-huh. So, so, and then I got to go watch her play with the clubs I fit her for. So oh, that yeah. was really cool. Was it one of the Auburn was, golfers? Uh, no, it was one of the Louisville. Oh, okay. Yeah, Cardinal. Yeah, so um, fit Hannah. And that was awesome. Um, that was really cool. Because kind of got to you know work with a college player and yeah. uh, worked with one girl that's that plays on the LPGA as well. So um, yeah, Gus is up there for sure. <laughs> but I don't know the yeah, I'd say he's he's probably one of the top top three. Do you fit yeah. Anne or does Anne just fit herself? Anne kind of fits herself. <laughs> she she'll ask like I think she asks everybody a little bit. What should I do? Should I get this shaft? Should I get that? Um, but yeah, she does not want like she'll just kind of pick something and she wants it to look good. She wants it to be a specific weight and and she kind of knows what she likes. It's just okay. Is there something new that's out there that she hasn't tried yet yeah. that she'll throw into her clubs? But who do you have a yeah, better chance I've asked her. <laughs> uh, of beating in a round with handicaps? Ann or Dan? Ann's a, I've played with Ann. Ann is really good. Oh, my gosh. So, <laughs> yeah. We're supposed to film a match um, against her. I'm, and she was talking about, we had her on the podcast, how competitive she gets or she can get. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're a little worried about that. <laughs> you know, I know she had, I think, like a little bit of an injury. So, I mean, you might have a oh, little bit more now, chance there. Oh, we need her now, Oh, yeah. <laughs> we need her while she's hurt. Oh, man. Yeah, no, but uh, yeah, I've only played golf with her once because then she moved up to Auburn before I got the chance to play with her a, a few more times. But, yep. Do you have any um, other goals for your uh, social media with content creation? Any kind of like maybe YouTube or going on that platform? Yeah, so we've we've kind of talked about it because the, the biggest thing is just finding the time to be able to create and to, to do everything we want to do and to do what I want to do from a, a social media side. 
eventually I would like to get into YouTube and making some longer form content and kind of being able to get a little bit more into, you know, talking about different clubs and doing like specific reviews instead of just kind of quick little tidbits on, on TikTok and Instagram. But that that's the long-term goal, but it's also, you know, I'm still fitting and working at the store full time. So we're kind of trying to divvy up time so that I have a little bit to do both and, you know, can, you know, make a, an effort on both ends. Cause I've definitely taken a little bit of a backseat on social media the last few months, just because this is our busy season. Mm-hmm. And it's hard when, you know, you're working five days a week seeing, you know, a million different people. And then you have to think, okay, now I have to make some videos about it. <laughs> we'll get into some personal favorite questions right now. Um, what's your favorite course that you've played so far? Ever? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, what an easy question. Yeah, um, yeah. And then we'll do a bucket list course after that, so you can be thinking of that one as well. Okay. Um, Trump Doral is probably the Blue Monster, is probably like off the top of my head is the first course that I think of. Mm-hmm. There's also like the first, and one of the only courses that I played that also was at one point like a tour venue. Yeah. So I would say Trump Doral is probably one of my favorites. I bet it was so nice out there. Yeah. Wow. It was it was great. I was playing a tournament. This was when I was a junior golfer. I was playing a tournament at the other courses, and then we, we finished up and stayed an extra day and then played the Blue Monster. What about so, the bucket list? Do you have a course you're just wanting to get to? Oh, Pebble Beach is – top of my list so would you so the big thing at Pebble Beach is the weather of course and they mm-hmm. they say it but supposedly with how far you book it in advance you know you have to play your tea time or you lose it if you get out there and mm-hmm. it's just horrible conditions are you going through with it or are you just saying I'm rebooking later yeah I know I'm going through yeah. with it <laughs> I would have to agree I mean unless I'm getting blown off the cliff yeah, yeah. I, I played one round uh, last year and I was in uh, the Canary Islands in Spain, uh-huh. and I was the only person that was out on the golf course because they already called it after I teed off that it was way too windy. Uh-huh. So I saw palm trees flying down, like falling down oh and everything like that, and I still didn't care. I was like, I'm in a foreign country playing golf. I'm going to finish this <laughs> You're going round. to Pebble no matter what. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> what's, a, uh, what's maybe, I'll say three courses in the Melbourne area because we're thinking about maybe that could be one of our trips um, maybe towards the end of the year. What's three courses for us to come and look forward to play? So Melbourne's kind of funny because there's there's Suntree, which is the private club that a lot of our customers are members at. And th- they have two courses there that are super nice. Um, but the rest, I would say if you want a fun layout and it's normally in pretty good condition, you have Duran. And then if you want to play a tough track that is normally in okay condition, but it's where actually Billy Horschel, I guess, grew up playing at, there's the Habitat, which is a little bit south of Melbourne. A nice thing about this area, though, is you're only like a 45-minute to an hour drive to all the kind of Orlando area courses. Uh, And then you can play, mm -hmm. you know, Champions Gate and Orange Lake. And, um, you know, there's the Ritz and all the big courses over there. Bay Hill. So... Yeah, Melbourne itself doesn't have a like I wouldn't say that there's one public course that's like, oh my gosh, you have to play. There's some good tracks out here, but you're in close enough proximity driving wise to some really good ones. You gotta go. We gotta get down there. Yeah. And see the other moon golf stores. Yeah, that's what we kinda wanna make a trip, maybe to visit all of them at some point oh, and do fun. like do some kind of content at each one and then I know um Jonah Jonah's dad offered us to stay oh, yeah. and that's what that's what i was thinking about that i don't know if i told you all that but i already had it planned out that maybe that. we offered could, a place to stay yeah yeah so we've got a, a housing arrangement so we can definitely make something happen while we're down there i'm down head to melbourne if you go down to palm beach you can play pga national it's right pretty much right next door to where the store's yeah. at that's what we got to do then well we appreciate yeah. you coming on sarah and uh i think that's all the questions we have um so thanks for coming on and y'all make sure y'all check out moon golf if you're down in the area go get fitted by we're gonna say the best fitter at moon golf certainly certainly all the auburn guys don't get mad at us don't get mad at us auburn guys (laughs) we don't build some relationships with Auburn because we're in there all the time so we don't build some good relationships
best fitter right here. Y'all check her out on TikTok. We're gonna have all that linked in the bio. Um, we appreciate it, Sarah. Well, thanks so much for having me. Thank you. See ya.